You are listening to the ABC Business Show, and here are your hosts, Kerry, Elise, and MJ. Hello, and welcome to the ABC Business Show, where we help entrepreneurs make their dream a reality. So welcome to our podcast today. We are excited to have you back. So as always, I am joined by MJ and Elise. Hi, ladies. How's it going? It's going great. How was your birthday, Carrie? So it was good. It was, uh, it feels like I just had a birthday. So it kind of came around quick this time, but oh, they get faster and faster. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they tell me. <laughs> so today I wanted to introduce our special guest. So we have Liz Fawn, who is a guide at Profit First Professionals. So uh, you have heard me talk about Profit First um, over the last year of our podcast. And Liz uh, is a guide with Profit First Professionals. So she helps people that uh, want to work with clients to help them take their profit first. So she's guiding them. She is in marketing and she's all things profit first. So welcome, Liz. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hello, ladies. Nice to see you all. Oh, it's so good to have you here. We're so excited. Welcome, Liz. We're excited to hear from you. Thank you. So as always, we start with our quote for the day. And our quote for the day today is one that I've used before, but it's such a good one that I'm just going to repeat it. So Profit is a habit. It is not an event. So just think about what that actually means. So profit is something you should be doing as a habit every single day of your business life. It shouldn't be something that happens just at the end of the month where you're crossing your fingers, hoping that there's a profit on your profit and loss report. It's something that you should be thinking about every single day um, and every single decision that your business makes. So today we're going to cover five reasons why people have not implemented profit first yet. So you you can find our previous podcasts where we've talked about what Profit First is, how it works, what the concept is. But today we wanted to talk about the other side as to why people haven't implemented it. Because when you procrastinate on something like that, when you eventually do start it, you're like, darn it, I should have done that before. Like, this is so much better. And, you know, and I hear about that all the time. So uh, I implemented Profit First uh, nearly eight years ago in my business and absolutely the best decision I ever made for my business. So me too. Absolutely. When I started my newest business, that's all I did. I I had wished I had done it for years when I was in real estate. And then once I started my coaching business, I said, I'm going to start this right away and implement this because it is the way to go. Absolutely. So, okay. Uh, so Liz, uh, the reason we have Liz here today is because she's hearing a lot of these reasons and excuses from the people that she's working with as well. So that's why we thought she would be a great guest to have on to kind of give us you know, another perspective. Sure. So the first reason um, people use the excuse, it seems like a lot of work. So Liz, what do you respond to when you're getting people saying like, what do I say to people when they say it seems like a lot of work? Sure. Uh, well, I sort of come back and say, you own a business. That's a lot of work. <laughs> right? Like you've decided to be an entrepreneur. You've decided to set up a business and change the way that you're living your life to fulfill whatever the dream is that you have with this business. So they're already working their tushes off. Um, where I go quickly, because even though you have the other podcast about uh, what Profit First is, the way that I think about Profit First is, is sort of how I answer most of the reasons people don't start. It's... um all this is, is a behaviorally based cash management system that is designed to allow clarity over your money to make better intentional decisions. That's all this is. It's not an accounting system. It's not bookkeeping. Right. It's clarity to say, you know what I wish? I wish I could um, save some money to buy a new truck. I wish I could hire somebody. I wish I could, all of those wishes can be made by simply setting money aside and declaring what you want. So if you say, I have better clarity, I see that I have $87,000 to spend on in this big pool of money. I don't need 87,000, I need seven. Ooh, let's pull that 7,000 out and save it for this. So it's just, it's, um, so I just needed to start with that. <clears throat> After that, I think the hard work is really deciding what you want. So one of the things we talk a lot about is declaring your goals. What are your intentions for this business? What are your goals for the next one to two to five years with your business? Are you looking to scale? Are you looking to sell? All right. of those are big decisions. And so I think the hard work, the pro profit first being the hard work is, is not the hard work. It's declaring what you want to do with your money. That's hard work. 
And I know Elise is like, absolutely, because Elise is all about goals and intentions and where do you want to go? And you know, that's yeah. one of her passions as well. Yeah, we all are. I mean, that that is it. People start a business to have a better life. They don't start a business out of desperation because it's way too much work. If right. you start a business because you're building a legacy and you're building something. And and this is, I love how you said that because it's, it's more of a mindset than anything. It's like, I'm going to do what I intended to do when I started a business. I'm going to make a profit and, and I'm going to make that profit first. I love that. Yep. And I'm going to pay myself. I'm going, right. I declared that I'm going to actually pay myself. I don't want to be the most, the hardest working, least paid employee of my own business. I but you have to, right? And you have to declare that though. So truly profit first is easy. Opening bank accounts. Okay. That takes a couple hours and then you're done because the bank accounts are open. Or if you use, we have online bank options that we're partnering with and it takes 20 minutes with a profit first person. So that's not even that hard. And after that, you're declaring and prioritizing your needs, your goals, and your vision for the business, and then saying, this is the money that I want to spend. And you're just learning how to be, um, to have the better habit, right? So I love that you, I love the quote of the day of profit is a habit, not an event, because it, most people do feel like it's a miracle that they have a profit at the end of the year. Like it was, they're just like, how did that even happen? <laughs> and then they say my second favorite thing, it says I have a profit, where did the money go? Uh -huh. <laughs> that's the big one right there it's like where this is, is it? my report you know and that's what yeah, i mean how much just... <laughs> but, but i don't have any of that where'd that go yeah. like right yeah that was right. yeah i had uh, a client that i was meeting with a couple of weeks ago and explaining to them the difference between their profit and loss and their balance sheet because they had no idea what each report was telling them even though they'd been in business four years no one had mm -hmm. explained it and yeah. you know just kind of the the lights that came on at the end of that conversation is like okay, now that makes sense why this number is on this report here, but I don't have this number in my bank account. And, and it all just kind of, you know, came together. So, um, you know, I know that is a question that Elise gets asked as well. It's like, hey, I, I'm profitable, but I, I don't see where the money went to. So yeah, yeah I, I explain that one very carefully, because it always comes with a sucker punch. Uh -huh. <laughs> totally. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, so in coaching, in coaching, we say, uh, uh, "Are you sitting down? Because I'm about to come at you really hard." Or something. <laughs> or, are you ready for this? <laughs> right. So go back to the fact that none of this is easy. Like yeah. the the conversations we have about money, the com the conversation, the declaration of goals, and you know where do we want to take this business? That's the hard work. Just go mm -hmm. back to that. That's right. Yeah. And I think that people overcomplicate the whole profit first system as well. And when you actually get down to it, like you said, Liz, it's really straightforward. You know, the business is the complicated part. You know, this side of it, you know, don't overcomplicate it. Just just follow the steps. So, yep. OK, so the second reason is my bookkeeper told me I don't need all those bank accounts. So we're initially talking of five bank accounts. Um, I have a couple extra than that. But we, you know, we have other clients that have a couple extra as well. But I don't know why bookkeepers get freaked out about having additional bank accounts to reconcile, because to me, you know, as a bookkeeper, that's just, that's what we do. What kind of um, reasons have you heard when it comes to that side of things, Liz? So we do hear that a lot. And it's, you know, you, you mentioned bookkeepers, but it could be the bank. It could be a spouse. It could be a peer saying, that sounds dumb. Why do you need all these bank accounts? And so the language I always go back to is say, well, how do you drive profitability specifically in your business then? Yeah. Or how are you going to help me drive profitability and get better clarity over my money? And then you get the, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't do that. They're like, okay, well, this is what I want to do because I know that what I'm asking and having these accounts will help me to get clarity so that I can intentionally do what I wanted my money to do. Mm -hmm. No, as I say, I love it, you know, like, like you talked about before, it's behavioral. I love it when I log into my bank account and I see my separate bank accounts, you know, in your OPEX income, payroll, owners pay profit and taxes that, okay, I can see where all my money is sitting because I've told my money, okay, you are to be used for payroll, nothing else. This money is to be used to pay me, nothing else. Right. And right. it's such a great feeling that having those bank accounts is so beneficial that, you know, for a bookkeeper or like you said, peers, friends, family saying, why do you have all those bank accounts? That just complicates it. Like, no, I'm telling my money where it has to go. And right. for me to be able to look in and see the balance on those different bank accounts is just the greatest feeling. 
And you know, and I looked at my bank account this morning, I get a text message every morning and I'm like, oh, that's what I have in my operating account. I'm like, oh, that's fine. It's March 1st in a couple of days. That, that's when I'm gonna you know, get my next you know, round of revenue. And so there shouldn't be a huge amount of money left in there. So uh, right. at least. In large corporations, multiple bank accounts is standard. It is not unusual at all. And um, allocations sometimes for large corporations are actually required under corporate law. And so what Profit First is doing is really helping the small, young, first start entrepreneur actually get on the right track with managing money. And once you start that and get going with it, all of a sudden it becomes fun. It's a great game. You get what you want. (laughs) And that's the miracle of it. And, and then Liz, you guys, you and Carrie, you guys help so many people get there. And of course, MJ does on the coaching side of things. She handles everything, but it is, um, it is a small miracle for a small business to emulate a large corporation is the smartest thing you can do. Yeah. It's like making your money work for you instead of you working for your money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It really, that is the difference. Let's raise in the roof a little bit on that one. That's right. (laughs) Uh, And and I love that. I mean, so we, we, I mean, I'll just go back to the title of the book. It's to transform this, these concepts, this behavior change, this framework for your cash management is transforming your business from truly a cash eating monster to a money-making machine. And it's just, again, clarity, right? The clarity of that. To, to also piggyback on what Elise said about large corporations, the other thing, you know, we hear from business owners all the time through Ask Mike questions, through, you know, our social media channels, through our own website, through people looking to work with profit-first professionals, um, accountants, bookkeepers, and financial coaches, is they're saying, I want to sell my business in five years. Now, the, the and we've heard this from banks, we've heard this from brokers to say, having these separate bank accounts, it makes that selling process and purchasing process of a business so much easier because you have shown or can prove that we have set up intentionally a savings or a rainy day account. That's what the profit account really is. We have intentionally paid ourselves as the business owners consistently and steadily for years. We have intentionally anticipated success by setting aside money for taxes intentionally. And the banks are like, dude, this is great. They probably don't say, dude, whatever a banker would say, <laughs> but whatever. No. And, then we, and then we have this expense account, but we also have systems to ensure that when, you know, that we know that this amount of money will allow us to grow, to scale, to support ourselves, to pay our team and being able to show that for two years, five years, 10 years, it makes the selling of a business so much easier, faster than anything, right? It's not and in the owner's head. More valuable. I would imagine oh my gosh. the value of the business. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Um, it's amazing. One of the things that we, that I look at and as a financial statement auditor from back in the day, working on the big ones, um, we look at what is called control. So when a business owner is controlling, which is what that is evidence of controlling the business and the business not running the owner, that's where value comes in. Totally. Yeah. It comes down to that intentionality. I love that word, how you use that Liz and that that's what it comes down to, you know, not sort of just saying, Oh, well, let's see what happens. Let's see if we end up making a profit. Let's see if I can afford my tax bill when my CPA tells me how much I owe at the end of the year, you know, it's being, you know, Mm -hmm. one step ahead of the game. And I think that just, you know, sets that business owner apart when they have that kind of outlook. And it's a case of like, okay, I'm in control of my business. Like you said, I'm in control. You know, I'm not just going to let my money disappear out of my bank account. I'm going to tell it what it has to do. So I love that. Okay. So this is a big one. Uh, Reason number three. And I know that Liz is going to crush this one. Um, I'm not profitable. So I can't start taking my profit first. Oh, that's so sad. I sort of, there are a couple there. A, that's not true. I just have to say, no, that's not true. (laughs) Um, And B, it's never too early to declare your intentions. It's sort of the refute I have on that. Many people get overwhelmed 
by any new system that they're implementing, whether it's profit first, whether it's a new CRM, whatever. And what happens often is that people will read a book or they'll hear about something like profit first and they think they have to go all in. And we know that habits and behaviors don't work like that. They can't, it's too much, right? And so being able to say, can you peel away 1% of your total revenue right now and put it in account as it's starting an emergency account? Could you do that? Well, yeah, I mean, I have two Spotify accounts. Maybe I cancel one. Okay, that's a one, that's great. Let's just do that, right? So, so when people say I'm not profitable, I can't do that. We change what the word profitable means to really saying, can you start to dial back some of the expenses and declare that you want to do something different with this money? What I really hear, so uh, it's sort of like the question, the unasked question when I'm not profitable is I owe a lot of money. And so, you know, they may be sitting on $100,000 in loans or they may be sitting on their EIDL loan and they're freaked out about that or whatever it is. And what the profit account actually is, it is an emergency account, a celebratory account and a debt um, remediation account. And so what you're saying is, do you want to declare that you will start to pay off your debt? Let's find 1%. Let's take out, like, look at all your expenses. Let's find 1% and put it somewhere else. And then we can service your debt differently. So that's sort of where I, I, I go. I tend to, and I'm sure MJ, you do this. I know Carrie, you do this. At least you probably do too, is I just ask more questions about what they think profitable means and why they think they're too early to do this. And then if not now, when, like, what is your benchmark for when is the right time? And when you break it down to that 1% and you get them to calculate that and they're like, oh, well, yeah, I can do that. You know, they're kind of, you know, stuck in this big number. And that's one thing, uh, you know, when we do the assessments, uh, you know, with our profit first clients and they're like, you want me to put 15% into my profit account? I'm like, I do eventually, but I'm not, not going to ask you to do that today. And so, you know, I have a, um, a client meeting uh, later today and we're about to look at their rollout plan and see, you know, okay, how much are you going to be putting into each account over the next 18 months to build up to that 15%? And we're starting with 1% in the profit account. Yep. And when you break it down like that and build it up, it makes it seem much more manageable. And so you are profitable. You have to just start making different decisions. You have to start, you know, because the next thing we will do with this client in two weeks is start going through every single line item on that profit and loss. And I always say to my clients, be prepared because I'm going to ask the hard questions. I'm going to play devil's advocate. I'm yeah. probably going to make you feel uncomfortable when I'm asking those questions, but the questions that have to be asked. Yeah. I'm so many times when I'm going over a PL, and I know all you ladies have seen this too. There are things in there that they have not used in months, years. There's software that new software has co- totally replaced and they're still paying for it. It's like, right. you know, if you don't just stop and really interrogate that PL, there are things that you are wasting money on. So, you know, that to me is step one. We, we find pretty regularly that a first pass at expenses, 10% of unnecessary expenses. Whoa. Whoa. And it's not uncommon. I mean, there are some that, to your point, I, one of my favorite stories is I had a, a member in the United Kingdom and she went on a holiday for two weeks and her credit card was uh, compromised during that time and she didn't want to deal with it, right? She's like, I, I don't want to deal with this. So I'm just going to close everything off not going to worry about, you know, payments and all the stuff, right? Because it was just everything was auto pay. And so she took, she took her holiday, she came back, and she started, you know, she took this as a challenge, she was new to profit first um, professionals, she was going through her certification. So we this was sort of where we were going. Anyway, she ended up making a huge declaration before she would turn back on auto pay. She went through her banks and her payments and was like, I don't need Oh my gosh, she had three graphic design tools. She was like, I don't even do that anymore. She had like oh. two or three of something to your point about the software. She ended up finding almost 2,500 pounds a month that she didn't need to turn back on. And she was so embarrassed, <laughs> A, right? So this is where Carrie, to your point, like, I'm gonna make you uncomfortable. There, there's a lot of emotion, a lot of shame, a lot of, I can't believe I did that. I should know better. I'm a, and she's, she's a financial professional, right? So she's like, so I'm like, what am I doing? This is my business. What but that's not, 
where you know she cares more about her clients than her own business. So, you know, that is a very real thing of of taking that pass, going line by line, finding that money and declaring how what is that for? You know, we do a one of the exercises we do when we're going through expenses is we simply put it in different columns. What is driving revenue? Right. Does this thing directly drive revenue? Mm-hmm. Is this necessary to the services that you provide? And is this negotiable? Or can we substitute this with something else? Right. Mm-hmm. And so even just categorizing expenses, not even like baby steps to everything, right? I'm not going to say no, because we know loss aversion is a very real thing. Yeah. Asking <laughs> someone to stop doing something, you know, it's it's easier to never buy the car than to have the car repossessed. Right. We know this. Yeah. And so just categorize and then say, okay, now we know these seven things do not drive revenue and they're nice to haves. Do we need those right now? Right. We're in triage mode. Do we need those right now? No. Can we turn them off for a little bit or ask to renegotiate? Yeah, probably we could do that. So yeah, sometimes so. they just need somebody to ask that question and point it out to them Correct. because it's real easy to go through and justify everything on your PL if you don't have anybody there looking at it with you. As soon as you get another set of eyes who's looking at it from a different perspective as well, then you're like, oh yeah, I, I guess I don't need that. So right. um, I had a client that the when we did this exercise in July of last year, uh, she found four hundred dollars per month on subscriptions and software apps that she no longer needed. And, and for deal. me personally, I have this on my calendar every three months to go through mine because you know it's one of those things where you just kind of you know, let the expense go through. Yep, I'm using that, but you know I have that as a task on my calendar to literally sit down. Am I still using this? You know, do I need to change this? Do I need to downgrade? You know, what's changed in the last three months? And, um, you know, there's always something where like, yeah, you know what? I don't need this. You know, just last week I took somebody off um, one of my subscriptions because she didn't need to be on there anymore. And, um, you know, it wasn't a huge saving, but you know what? It adds up. So, okay. So our next reason is people love their spreadsheets. So people always come back to that. I just use a spreadsheet to keep track of all of that. And then I just have all my money in one account. And to me, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so much work to do that and keep it in a spreadsheet, keep it all reconciled, know exactly where it is, but there's still that temptation to spend it. And that's for me, the biggest advantage of having the separate accounts rather than having a spreadsheet to break it all down. Yep. I mean, Mike, Mike talks about behavioral intercepts all the time, right? So we're not trying, we're not trying to change behavior. We're trying to leverage it. So the question when people say, well, I already have these spreadsheets and say, okay, great. Congrats. I love spreadsheets too. I use them inappropriately. So I use them almost like word documents, which is every financial person's nightmare. Cause <laughs> why are you doing that? I just like boxes, I guess. Um, but the question is, um, how often do you check your bank account? Oh, every day. Mm-hmm. Oh, you check your bank account every day. Okay, cool. Why do you check your bank account? So I want to see how much money I have available. I want to see if I can make purchases. Got it. Um, how often do you check this spreadsheet? Oh, like once, twice a month. Mm. Do you <laughs> think? <laughs> and then you just wait, right? You're like, okay. So which of those two, your spreadsheet or your bank account, um, allows you to make better decisions over purchasing something. Well, the bank account, because it's real and it's live. So if I helped you to get better clarity in those bank accounts and helped you to leverage what you already told me you do every single day, do you think it might be a little bit more fun instead of having one giant pot of money to break that pot into smaller pots so that you could say this part of my hundred thousand dollars, I'm going to pull this out over here. This is 10,000 that I I've declared. I want to have as an emergency, or this is 5,000 that I'm going to start because I need a new employee in three months. I know it, I can feel it's coming. Right. Then, so then we go back to it's Parkinson's law, right? So it's, you know, the more money we have in a giant pot of money, we're going to spend it because we yep. see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my favorite is I use this with my children, right? So I have three kids and they'll say, mom, can I have $50 for something? And I said, well, what do you need? Well, I don't know yet. I said, okay, since you don't know what you need, what if I give you 20 bucks and you can spend all of it? They're like, oh, all right, fine. Great. Right. So if I give them 50, they're going to figure out some way to spend that money because that's what Parkinson's law is. We just do it. If we have more money, we'll spend more. Right. And if we have less money, we'll make do with what that is. If I only have 20 bucks, I'll be more thoughtful with it. 
I'll be more innovative with it and I'll be more declarative and say, oh, I only have 20. So I really want to spend it on, I don't know, I have two girls and a boy right now. So the two girls are like makeup people. So we'll say some makeup product <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so that's, that's sort of my retort to that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And then uh, last reason, um, people often think that because they're a new business or they're just starting out, that it's too early to implement profit first. And my answer to that is like, no, this is the best time to implement that because then you start a good habit from day one and you don't have to try and break those habits as well. So I'm like, no, I love it when a new business comes and they've got the profit first book and they're like, oh yeah, I want to do this. And like, is this is too early? No. Yeah. No. Do it now before you get into a bad habit that we have to break. Correct. Uh, yeah, I, I, I go quickly to my own story. So I know that if we had profit, profit first implemented in, I have a professional development business with two business partners. And if we would have had this in our business from the get-go, we would have lasted a lot longer. And we'd probably still be there, honestly, right? Um, we... We're a scrappy little startup. We thought we were doing really well. We thought we were being, you know, tight with our money and we thought we were doing the right things, but we didn't have systems for this. We mm -hmm. would see, somebody would say, you need this. And we're like, okay, I need this $15,000 thing. Right. Did I have money for the $15,000 thing? Maybe, but do you know what I sacrificed for the $15,000 thing? Paying ourselves. Never. Right. We had no avenue to do that. We didn't even think it was possible. We had no savings. No, I mean, we were not anticipating success. So, you know, to your point, Carrie, you're exactly right. Starting out with a system, starting out with the fact that, you know, the reason I love another reason is this process is it goes with revenue categories. So there are revenue bands. The first band is zero to $250,000 in revenue. That looks a lot different than it does if you're a $10 million in revenue business, in real revenue. So when you're a startup, you don't have a lot of employees. And so the operating expense sort of parameters that target is 30% of your revenue goes to operating expenses. And people look at that and say, no way, I have to have blah, blah, blah. Who's working with you? Well, nobody, it's just me. So why should your business take more than you? You're doing the work. And if you're right, so you're, you're setting yourself up to say, I can be leaner, I can be tighter, go back to the scrappy, I can be a little scrappier, I can be more clever with my money. But as you increase your revenue, the operating expenses go because you take on more team, take on more, you know, you need more. So yeah, it's, it's never too early to start. It's never too early to declare what you want. I mean, again, go back to what we said, the hard work is deciding what you want this business to do for you and for your family. Yeah. And I loved Liz that when you said, you know, you know, um, it's going to be probably next quarter, I'm going to need some more leverage in my business. I'm going to need to hire somebody. If I start setting that money aside now, it's not so scary. So many times when I talk to people about building their team and adding another person to be able to help them, they're like, I can't afford $40,000. And I'm like, it's not $40,000 a month. You know, it's a $40,000 hire spread out over 12 months. And if you already were saving for that for the last three months, then it's yep. such an easy decision to make. It's not based on money. It's based on how talented is this person and can I bring them on? So oh, that's so great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, it's the, the thinking again, declaring what you want to do. Mike and Ron have um, 21 bank accounts. They're very specific where, where, they, with, where they want their money to go. They're very intentional about future plans. They're thinking ahead. And again, those are all habits of successful business owners. This is yep. not even really about profit first. This is, what do you want? What do you see? You're looking down the curve. What do you anticipate happening? Are you a seasonal business? Do you know when your slow season is? What's going to happen when you might not make money for six weeks? How are you going to handle that? Right. I don't know, right? So we can, at the very beginning, anticipate all of those things by simply declaring what you want your money to do. And we've got a landscaping client who we, you know, she's like, Carrie, my December and January are just my hardest month. You know, she lives up north and, you know, they get that, you know, white stuff called snow and, um, and she's not able to, you know, earn revenue. So we're looking at different ways that she can pivot to earn revenue in those months. But I said, well, hey, let's just start our drip account. Let's start putting, you know, funds away now 
so that come December this year, you don't have that problem again. So, you know, it's just, and I love that Ron and Mike have 21 bank accounts. I did not know that it was that many. Oh, I'm definitely going to use that in the future. <laughs> oh. It's a lot. And they're, and they're, but they're so specific, right? So new hire right. things, conference things, travel. Uh, we have a sunshine fund. We have a family fund. Like they support us so beautifully. Like every fall there's money in an account so that profit first pays for all our school supplies for our kids. All of us oh, who have wow. kids. I love that. I know. He's that like, just give us your receipts. We're paying for all it. Right. But they've declared that their core values are team and family, like, right? All these accounts mirror their core values. Yep. And that's, that's such awesome. a, I mean, think of it as a tithing account, a community account, a charity account, all these things that business owners say, when I own a business, I'm going to give 10% to the ASPCA. How are you going to do that if you have it all in one big pool of money and you spend it on computers mm -hmm. because it, your computer exploded and now you feel terrible <laughs> because you have it on your website that you're supporting the ASPCA and you're not. Now you're like, no, I'm a liar. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, to go back to the emotion of this, people are like, oh, I feel so bad. We're like, you don't have to feel bad. Just open an account. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Intentional intentionality and control. Those are the two key words I think that, you know, we can take away from today is that, you know, don't keep making excuses not to implement profit first. You know, take the control back of your business, of your cash flow, and have that intentionality of where your money is going to go. And, you know, whether you have, you know, the five bank accounts to start off with, or you make your way up to 21, like Ron and Mike do, that, you know, it's it's being intentional about where your money is going to and not looking at your PL at the end and thinking like, oh my gosh, how much did I spend on this? Like, you should be knowing exactly what that is, you know, throughout the whole year. So, yeah. Great, great information, Liz. Thank you so much. And can you tell us what would your tip of the week be? Oh, my tip of the week would, in the spirit of baby steps, would be to just open one account. Take a look at all of your revenue for the last 12 months. How much did you make? If you made $100,000, could you take 1% of that and put it, start to put it away every time you get an influx of money? So if you get $10,000, put 1% in that account. Just open one account, put 1% in, start to see what happens. Somebody said earlier, like it becomes this game and it's a much more fun game than feeling bad about the fact that you're not living what you said you would do. So that's it. Absolutely. Count. I like Just that. Just do it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Liz. Lots of great information. So if you are looking for uh, you know, some support uh, in getting profit first, then please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find us on our um, ABC Facebook page. And then don't forget to follow us on Spotify and Apple as well and subscribe. And if you are a regular listener, we would love it if you would go and leave a review for us and, and definitely share our podcast as well so that we can help more uh, business owners to uh, make their dreams a reality. So don't forget to join us next week when Elise will be sharing with us about uh, estimated tax payments, those fun quarterly tax payments that so many people don't do when they should be doing them. So be prepared to bring your pen and paper and take lots of notes so that you know the questions you need to go back to your tax professional and ask. So thank you all for joining us. We will see you next time. Great job, Liz. Thanks for joining us. It's awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. Enjoyed having you, Liz. It was great. Bye. You have been listening to the ABC Business Show with Carrie, Elise, and MJ. Make sure you tune in next week.